the Union Minister of Sports, Youth Affairs and Information and Broadcasting, Sri Anurag Thakurji, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the inaugural. Today is the curtain raiser of the second edition of TV9 What India Thinks Today's Summit. Over the next two days, we will be hosting several international thought leaders and cabinet ministers and industry captains discussing India's next big leap in the arena of geoeconomics and geopolitics. And most notably, we have the summit keynote scheduled for tomorrow evening at 8 p.m., which will be delivered by none other than the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modiji. But this evening, we are here to celebrate the curtain raiser with a subject very close to my heart. I must mention that this evening is going to be special because apart from glamour and glitch, it will be an evening of gravitas. You must have already spotted in the hall many well-known faces from the world of sports and entertainment. They are here tonight for a purpose. They are here tonight to discuss a bold vision for India, not as an economy, not as an economic or military power, but as a soft power. Our deliberations this evening will focus on the idea of soft power for hard gains. So what's soft power? A phrase used extensively these days. The American political scientist Joseph Nye defines soft power as a country's ability to influence others through attraction and persuasion rather than coercion and force. As he says, seduction is always more effective than coercion. Like the American dream is sold across the world to a large extent via Hollywood. Similarly, countries like Brazil and Argentina, they have earned a name for themselves in the world through their excellence on the soccer field. That is the context of soft power this evening. India has always been known as a land of yoga, Vedas, and Ayurveda, and more recently, as home to some most spectacular cinematic storytelling in the world. The home of Bollywood, but late, of late also Sandalwood, Kaliwood, Tollywood, all hail Natu Natu. At the same time, our prowess as a sporting nation is on the rise. While our cricketers have been doing us proud for some decades now, there are other sports where India is making its mark in the global arena, thanks to the great ambition and tenacity of some extraordinary sports star and the vision of our prime minister and, of course, the able administration of our sports minister. Badminton, tennis, shooting, wrestling, boxing, athletics are some such sports. Thank you, Anuragji. Now, as India rises in the global pecking order, earning a place for itself at the high table, there is immense opportunity for India to add to this heft through excellence in sports, movies, and music. After all, the perception of India is the sum of how the world sees us. If we as a country create more winners, like powerful cerebral content and winning champions, then we can rise faster in the world order. We can make greater hard gains, be it trade or goods or services. Let us not forget that in 2016, when Israel and Palestine agreed to give peace a chance, it was at the behest of celebrities like Roger Waters of Pink Floyd, John Bon Jovi, and Cristiano Ronaldo. The peace may not have lasted, but people-to-people -people goodwill remains a far better alternative to bombs and guns. This evening, 
Over several conversations, we'll hear policymakers, celebrities, sports champions, and brand gurus develop a roadmap to further burnish brand India. Of course, no evening like this one can be complete without some celebrations. So therefore, tonight we will also be honoring a few extraordinary men and women from the world of sports and entertainment with TV9 Network's Nakshatra Samman Awards. So ladies and gentlemen, we have an exciting e evening ahead of us. Let's kick start it right away. Thank you once again for being us here. Namaskar.